You can't see it with your naked eye or even feel it with your fingers, but a surface texture error likely caused. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and according to the NHTSA, out of spec crankshaft surface finish is the root cause of the L87 recall, which has affected nearly 900,000 vehicles. This unfortunate real world example just shows how important surface texture really is. Oddly enough, the most studied surface in an engine isn't the crankshaft. It's actually the cylinder bore, which is why we're here at John Causey Racing Engines to introduce you to my good friend, Dr. Mark Malberg, who is a surface finish guru. So Mark, how do we measure something you can't even see or feel? Well, I mean, that's what we've been doing all our lives with things like microscopes and other things. But in the case of surface texture, we're going to measure it with a, with a very small diamond okay. and electronics that sense how it moves up and down. Think of it like a vinyl record player on steroids. Obviously, we want it to make good music, not bad music. <laughs> yeah. Right? The, the GM song is pretty sour right now right well don't blame the record player all right okay but, yeah. but we're going to figure out what song it's playing with a measurement system so here's a gauge right here behind us there's a little tiny diamond poking out in there and it's a cone and the tip of the cone is that two micron radius so just for some scale of reference yeah. if the diamond tip is two microns What's about the size of human hair? Human hair is like 80 microns. So the, the tip of that dude is tiny. So we have this ability to measure these surfaces, mm -hmm. but why is it important? Well, it's important because this surface means everything when it's pressed against another surface. If I make this surface like a bed of nails and I press it against a, a soft surface, your hand, yeah. or you're gonna sit on it, it matters. Yeah. Or let's scale it all the way down. I'm going to press this against a piston ring. It's a different scale, but it still matters. And that scale of putting, say, a piston ring against this cylinder bore, that's where sealing happens. That's where combustion is contained. That's where friction happens. That's where lubrication happens. That's where debris yeah. happens. Everything happens at that interface. So explain what you're holding right now. Yeah, so this is a 3D printed section of a cylinder bore. So this is a two-dimensional profilometer. It, it gives you a trace. A line across this surface. So I used a, a 3D roughness measuring system. I used it. Go ahead. I know, that's it. it's just super cool. It's super cool, right. So I use a 3D measuring system that uses optics and light to get super high resolution data. This is the size of the tip of your pen. That's about a one millimeter square. So make a dot on the piece of paper. That's how much area I've covered. That's blown up. So that's a one millimeter area blown up. Blown up. We did that so we can highlight and emphasize there's a texture here. Right. Now this is mind blowing. This is a DLC piston ring mm -hmm. at the same magnification. That's about a little more than a millimeter and that is the actual thickness at the same scale and the same roughness at the same scale. So this would be a, a DLC ring, half millimeter ring, and that's how it would run on this surface. Now that's mind blowing right there in your hands. So that is a traditional Molly ring, and you can see the porosity and the roughness on there in comparison. Now th this is what a Molly ring would normally run against. This is a pecone surface, and you can see there's so much less valley relative to that one. But this one needs valley because that ring doesn't have the porosity. Right. So this rubs right off exactly. and breaks right in. That's for the old term, it's, you're breaking in the ring, this ring breaks in. And it's using that surface almost as the smooth side and the oil is gonna be retained in the porosity on, on the ring side. Absolutely. We've flipped that now. Yes. Now the bore is retaining the lubricant, yep. where the smoother, harder ring is the, the shiny side of the interface, right. if we will. Yeah. Because what we're doing here is we're creating systems. It's not about what this is, it's how the ring, the liner, yes. the texture, the oil, they all have to work together 
to create a system that is efficient and durable. Right, so if we took this guy right here, this smooth ring against that smooth bore, it'd be a disaster. It does not live very long. Right, we can't just randomly swap a ring package with a, a, a same honed bore. By the way, all this talk about the surface texture isn't just theoretical. Not only do these guys put it into practice every day with the engines they build, I've actually put it into practice in one of my dad's old NASCAR engines. I'll leave a link in the description box below for a video series where we use texture and coatings to unlock more horsepower. From previous work that we've done together and yep. working with the guys at Southwest Research, we've done mm. a lot of testing, which by the way, if you want a, a deeper dive into how friction and wear are two independent phenomenon, yeah. let us know in the comments below. We'll, mm. we'll dive into that. Well, dude, we could dive deep if we want. Yeah, because we would <laughs> sidetrack this video completely if we went there right now. But right. just understand that friction, wear, two different phenomenon, not completely related. So yes. we want to reduce friction and reduce wear when it's possible. And surface texture is a thing we can manipulate to try to lower both friction and wear. Absolutely, and and let's, let's start with the myth. Okay. The myth is if it's shiny, it's smooth. Stick your finger up against a piece of glass and try to rub it. That glass is smooth, but your finger sticks. Right. So we've got to get past this idea of shiny is good, shiny is better, shiny is slippery. Not necessarily. Right, because there are some cylinder bore materials that we hone them and they're very shiny, like yeah. sumabore. Right, it's pretty, isn't it? Yes, but there's lots of holes in it. Right, right. So we've got one right here. You want to grab that one? So yeah, check out this surface. That surface is made up of a really smooth, shiny top. Mm -hmm. but that alone wouldn't do the job. Right, because it would be too smooth, you wouldn't have enough lubricant retention because proper lubrication is the right oil, the right place, the right time, the right amount. That's proper lubrication. Yes. If you don't have enough retention, mm -hmm. be it a pore or a valley, right. the texture to retain the oil, you are gonna have a problem. Absolutely, and it's this balancing act because we do want smooth, mm -hmm but that's in the peak part of the surface, not the valley part of the surface. Right, and that's what this is back here. Exactly. So with this device, right. we can trace a surface like this, and a, a better example would be a surface like this. That's a pretty one, isn't that? Isn't that beautiful? Where we've engineered. Exactly. Where we've used a rougher diamond to create these deep valleys. Yes, we've made a nasty rough surface by normal terms. Mm -hmm. a, a, a normal shop person would look at that and say, well, I've never used that surface. Yes. But we're gonna use the valleys. Yes, because we're gonna come in with a smoother diamond and reduce it down and make it smoother on top so we have this plateau effect. Exactly. We can carry load. Right. But we still have those valleys to hold oil. This is controlled non-cleanup. To a machinist. Yeah. It's we're going to leave that previous process hanging around, but in a really, really controlled way. And the control of that is key. How many of those valleys do we leave behind are going to be super important. And there's no one size fits all answer. No. This is where we do the magic of tuning a surface to fit the application, to fit the piston rings. Right. Application always dictates chemistry and application always dictates surface texture as well. 100%. And I think what's interesting right now is we're in a space where people are trying to get that last bit of improvement out of systems mm -hmm. and they haven't considered surface texture enough. We've got testing for materials. We can smash them together. We've got testing for lubricants. Mm -hmm. You know, we can run them hot, run them hard, but the level that surface texture matters is in the real application at real loads, at real speeds, and our tests don't do that well. No, that's a great point. In a previous video, we showed how the Timken OK load tester, the, the bearing tester that we've seen in lots of videos on TikTok and all that kind of stuff, doesn't really tell you what's gonna happen in a real engine. And part of that we mentioned was the loads exactly. and the materials. But the issue is that when you put that much load, an unrealistic load yeah. against an unrealistic surface, 
you're going to get an unrealistic result. Oh, man. Put that on a T-shirt. That's good. <laughs> unrealistic load. What was that? Unrealistic texture. Unrealistic, unrealistic results. results. Why we come to a place like here at John Causey Racing Engines to make sure that we create in this device with the Rottler Hone, right. we can create this. The guys at Total Seal can make this. Exactly. And we can go to the dyno and we can run the engine and tear it apart and then measure what we did. Exactly. And I think this will make some of my OEM friends really jealous. We have a honing machine probably 50 feet away from a dyno right. and we can iterate fast and see exactly what happens when we add two more strokes and change the amount of Alex. Right. And see what that's doing for, for vacuum, for horsepower, for durability, right here in real time. If you find engine performance interesting, check out the Engine Performance Expo channel here on YouTube. It is packed with one of a kind, educational engine related content. So, Hopefully you kind of understand that surface texture from roughness to waviness mm. is super critical to engine performance and durability. But you as a viewer, what can you do about it? Mm. Because, you know, I don't have people, a hone in my, in my garage, right? <laughs> yeah, most people aren't building their own engines and have their own dyno back there where you can have this closed feedback loop and engineer your own texture to make your engine as efficient as possible. Right. So what do you do? So as you, the viewer, there are three things I can tell you that you can do to try to help measure the outcome of what you have. Number one is a magnetic drain plug because it's gonna collect all of those little iron bits they're wearing off. It's a visual inspection. It's okay. qualitative, not quantitative. Got it. I can kind of see uh -huh. how much is going on. And over the life of the engine, it should get less. And if it starts getting more again, then you know there's a bit of an issue going on in the engine. Okay. The next thing you can do, which is just as easy, is look at your oil filter. If it happens to be a cartridge dodge filter, mm -hmm. it's really easy to kind of look in the pleats and see, is there debris, is there stuff in there? Okay. Because the drain plug is only gonna catch ferrous things, things that can Metallic stick to a magnet. Things, right, yeah. yeah. The filter is gonna catch other things that are non-metallic, maybe chain guide wear, things like that, you can see. It'll kind of give you an idea visually of, well, is there more or less stuff in the filter than before? I think that's interesting. And we talk about that in surfaces as well. Once you start doing it, your eye will start to recognize it. The first time it's, I don't know what I'm looking at. Right. But two or three times later, you start to recognize that person. I know that guy by how he walks. I know that, yes. you know, that person's voice on the phone. You start to know your engine after two or three views. Yes. Yeah, the one's not gonna probably tell you as much as once you become familiar right. with it, you're gonna know it. Yes. The last one, the third, gives you the most insight because the first two are just kind of qualitative. Yeah, getting to know it, you know, see where you're trending. The third one, used oil analysis, is quantitative. It's gonna give you data. It's yes. gonna give you parts per million. It's gonna give you fuel dilution and soot and percentages of what's actually happening in the engine. Yeah, That tells you what's going on. And over time, you can build that trend mm -hmm. to see, am I trending upwards? Not good. Uh -huh. Trending downwards, which will happen during run-in? Yes. Or am I holding steady, which you should be most of your life? So it gives you that ability to make data-driven decisions because I don't know about you, Mark, but I know in my life, the worst decisions I've ever made are decisions based on fear and not facts. That's a really good point. That's a very good point. Because all we're doing here with the profilometers and these tools is we're measuring what we're creating. Turning it into facts. Yes. So we're making decisions about, okay, how do we build this engine? What does that texture need to look like? Right. We're doing it based on measurements. We measure what we do on the front end here with yeah. the profilometer. Then we go to the dyno and we measure what the outcome is. And we connect them. Yes. But so, the oil analysis gives you that feedback, that right. data that allows you to make a decision. So in light of, say, the GM recall, when they're saying go from 020 to 040, well, does that mean that every engine needs to go from 020 to 040? Probably not. Does a thicker oil 
benefit my engine, yes or no, you can make that decision based on data, not fear. Well, and I love the fact that that decision also helps you predict the future. Yes. You know where you're trending. Right. If things start sloping out, out of whack, shut it down before something bad happens. Right. It's like a blood test. It 100% is. You, you go to the doctor every year and you know where you're trending. Right. And you can pre prevent the disaster yes. by monitoring where you are. And I think oil analysis is a perfect analogy for that. Yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this deep dive into metrology and engine performance and texture and how all this comes together because this is, in my opinion, real world tribology. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.